I don't like international breaks, man. No. It's more so, more so if you're in Lagos, it's been raining for the last two days, right? And what happens is, you know, when it rains, the way it rains, if you're on the island, for example, right, which is pretty much um, not landlocked, it's waterlocked. Um, then on top of that, you have this poor drainages, which means that if it rains for two hours, right, mm-hmm. you know, everywhere, problem, everywhere yeah. is flooded, basically. So I've literally been indoors for the last three days, right? So imagine not having, being indoors, no real football. You know, I don't like international football if it's not if it's not if it's not the World Cup, the Euros, or the mm-hmm. Afcon. Every other thing is just I'm just like you know what I, I couldn't care less, man. I really couldn't care less. I watched the highlights, but to watch the game, well, this, except this, this uh, particular one was interesting, sure. This particular international break, I think I enjoyed. It. No, but least, that, I don't, I don't, I, especially the leagues just started like a month ago. You know, everything's like three four games in. Teams are starting to pick up, and then bam, you, you yeah, do two week break. It doesn't make sense, you know. Yep. yep. For me, for I don't me, like it. For me, concentrated in one month, like let the leagues play. You know, stop in December if you want. Do, yep. Do, do do a month. Do like three weeks because it's better for international football as well. You get these players that they come in and out for two games. They get injured. Yeah. yeah. It's better for the national coach. Like in Nigeria, same thing, right? Like you get the same squad. For, for three weeks straight, you can train with them. You can get a little, you know, gelling together. That way, it's like chopping and changing. You know, every every uh, month, you get different players. So how, how can we expect results from national coaches? How, how can they achieve that, you know, when they don't get the same group of players every time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, most, most of the injuries as well, you know, you know, jet lag, fatigue, all that stuff. You know, you're traveling to uh, South America, you know, North America, come back. Um, players pick up injuries due to the fact that you know they are moving a lot. Um, so I, I, I always use an example for you know an example. I don't like to move apartments, right? I don't like to move houses. Um, when I move from a location to another location for work, you know, I have to I have to be tunnel focused to execute my work in the new location, right? Um, it's exciting, but work is work. So imagine mm-hmm. that for players as well, you know, you're moving constantly, you're moving from South America back to, you know, then you travel to maybe Ecuador, okay, you know, from Brazil to Ecuador to play a game, then you come okay. back to Europe and you expect it to play at the same level. Now, of course, you know, players earn a lot of money, they're professionals, that's why the name, the word pro is there. But in the end, it doesn't stop the fact that, it doesn't change the fact these guys are human beings, right? Mm-hmm. And mm. they still have to deal with the same things you would deal with. The difference is they have their professionals and they have more money. So what you say is the great points. Um, reduce injuries. National teams benefit more by having the players in one place for a longer time. And you can mm. get it over and done with. Jige. As opposed to every every eight matches or seven match days, you know, people are moving across the continent. Uh, and doesn't, plus, doesn't we're, we're, we're pretending we're, to be green now. We want to be green now. So I mean, why, we, why are we adding to the environmental footprint by flying people all over the place, you know, all the time? So right. So there's so if you want to if you want to go EV, uh, that's a, that's another right? that's another angle angle to go in. So that's why when when these people uh, say they're so they're so big on on EV, you know, they're so big on green, going green, and all that yeah. stuff. I'm like, your talk is cheap. You know, how much do you want to do about it? Those most times, those trends is not for not for reserve players. Most times, on on most occasions, most trends are always for reserve players, players who maybe just coming back from injuries, and the rest. But I think the teams that will enjoy this international break are the ones struggling. You know, Chelsea, Newcastle, um, Man United, and the rest. So I'm sure they they will be happy that at least there's a break now. They can rediscover their form and all. But I enjoy this particular international break, especially for Nigeria. It was. And I feel similar was, playing was, nearly ninety minutes. What's up with that, man? Against Saint Thomas, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Come on, guys. Napoli, Napoli. The Laurenti is on the phone already. You know, exactly. Like, are you serious? Come but, on. But it wasn't necessary. That ninety minutes wasn't necessary. To be honest. <laughs> no, I, I, I think he also wants to. I mean, the, the balance is that he wants to break the the goal scoring record. You know. Yeah. Um, he's got what well, I, I think the. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's me, but every time I look at that goal record, it it looks um it looks a bit funny to me. Um, he wants to break the the thirty seven goal record, so if you take him off, I'm sure he's gonna you know trade fits and say, look, 
you know, why are you taking me off? I'm trying to I'm chasing something here. And I think he's the one, he's got the real chance to break it in in the next two years. I think he can, he can smash it, you know, because he's done hat tricks. He's done two hat tricks now in, in what, you know, four, six, four, five games. Yeah. He does another hat trick. Yeah. That takes him to 2023. You know, he's maybe, um, give or take, maybe 10 goals or 14 goals shy of breaking it. So, I no, think he, depending on the opponent. Uh, he can take, you know. Depending on uh, the opponent. The only so, thing that he has to do now is uh, he just needs to nationalize a few defenders and he'll be good, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, midfielder. You know, I, I think I think the midfield is the, is the biggest problem with uh with with Nigeria. Um, the midfield is, is terrible. Um, it's just it's just ridiculous. Ah, what about I Aribo? Mean, you pick a you team and you see only four. Yeah, you got you got Aribo. You will be. You got Frank. Uh, Uyeka, You've yeah, got um, Didi. Didi. Then this I, other guy. I'm sorry, yeah. man. I'm sorry, man. I don't count Didi inside my this thing. You can add him to your list, but. I think mm-hmm. Nidhi is Nidhi. I don't I don't know that Nidhi has played ten good games for Nigeria. Honestly, I'm not and I don't I don't say that to I don't say that to um to be mean spirited or anything. I just can't remember a performance, you know, or a set of games when Didi played and you yeah. know, like you know what, you know, <laughs> went hard. You get? Mm-hmm. Um, I used to have the same feeling with Mikel in the last um in the last four years of his uh, Super Eagles, um you know tenureship. But I remember games when Mikel, we thought, you know what? You know, that, that yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't remember Didi having I feel like with the national team, you know, it is such a it is such a you know uh knife edge uh, situation for players, you know, because it's hard to pick from a national team. So I think that tournaments are where you can say, you know, this tournament, I made my mark in this tournament. So for example, you know, the Paul Pogba story this week, um has meant that you know Popoba is trending once more. Um, but when you remember his in, when you remember his international career, you remember it for the 2018 World Cup, mm. right? Yeah. You would say, oh, mm-hmm. that was his that was that was Popoba for France. Yeah, but you, be, you can't live off of one one World Cup performance. I'm sorry, like no, you, how, how, how long it's been yeah. now? You know, it's, you it's he's a top player. You know? Their whole life. Players live off of one World Cup their whole life. You can't say that. Yeah, like two seasons with Juve, where he was world class, and the World Cup. Yeah. Apart from that, it's been a disappointment. No, I think the World Cup is enough. The World Cup alone is enough. It's enough for you to say, "Oh, I'm done with football." The World Cup alone. The World Cup alone cannot be enough to say you are done with football. The World Cup is a tournament of what twelve games or how many games? Winning the World Cup is massive. It's the biggest international tournament. Twelve games, okay. But 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 sorry. I sorry uh, to seven talk, games was, if you make it to the final. I was meeting up with you know uh this thing. But it, 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 it's it, for a for, for a professional that would that probably would have more than 10 years in their career to play one tournament and then say, Oh, I, I, it's enough to say I'm done with football. That, that's what are what are you serious? Come on. Man. I mean, and let's, just, not, and, and, and let's not start the narrative but, of World Cup champions because I can I can name Mustafi and players like that that won the World Cup, and we're not you know we're not talking them in the conversation of world class talent. So winning the World Cup, it is it no. Is I mean, the, I mean, the Stan, I mean football. personally, yeah. I mean personally, personally, I I feel that winning the World Cup it's a a, a big thing, a massive thing, and maybe maybe you enjoy it more when when you are done with football. And especially when you when you had big impacts in the you know in the team all through the World Cup and the rest, someone like Pogba now, Pogba maybe let's say retires today, he looks back you know look look at the 2018 World Cup, you know what his impact all through from the group stages to the finals and the rest. And come on, trust me, he would say at least I, I have done something not just for my country but for for a country that that I can call my fatherland and. I feel that's why I said that's enough for for any average footballer. I think just winning the World Cup is is enough goal for any average footballer. The individuals can come in later on, but winning the World Cup, I think, is enough. It's enough. So, 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 so we arrive at this at this conversation because I was, um, you know, speaking about. Um, I am more uh, sympathetic towards um, towards players who may not be, you know, may not be superstars. Or may not be regular starters for the for the for the, for the country. So if you take the Sunday Mba, um, for example, you know, mm. when you Mba, you remember him for the 2013 Afcon. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, so a player like that, you know, you cannot begrudge that player, 
um the the bragging rights of saying you know this was the the one tournament that you know all the lines fell in the right places do you get um hmm. for a player like Oba, of course you expect that the standards are higher uh, and whatnot but yeah anyway that's that's uh, that's all the that's all the chat out international break um i'm happy it's done i absolutely do not like international <laughs> breaks um it just it just brings everything to a grinding halt you know we're chatting about um you know san marino and and um you know uh, <laughs> and dora with the with the greatest respects to those countries that are lot to visit those countries to be fair no but um, to be but, honest um, guys i just want to mention the the spain team you know because i know they played georgia and cyprus you know the opposition is way below the levels but i honestly haven't seen i can't remember spain playing like this honestly like the speed and the directness of this spanish team and and it's going to be judged against you know the likes of germany france and all that in the tournament in the next euros but guys the it it was unbelievable you know with, with nico williams on the left with that new kid laminia williams on the right i mean guys it's a new spain you know it's it's a direct spain like before yeah. spain used to struggle with with teams like this you know look at the last world cup uh, morocco you know Way better, obviously, you know, classes above them. Russia in 2018, they also got knocked out by, you know, a team they should have beaten. They were struggling with that, you know, passing style, possession, but never really got to the goal. Now in the last two, three games I've been watching them, they just keep on going. They're so fast, relentless. Who's your striker? Alva Morata, no? Okay, no, Allah. No, Allah. No, but you got, you got, uh, what's no, his but... name? The Villarreal, the Villarreal man. What's his name now? Yeah, Gerard Moreno. Yeah, no, but Miranda, Miranda is, is, yeah. is a really no, good but Marata, is... for all the jokes and memes we want to say, like he's still a capable number nine that if he gets chances, he's gonna so, he's gonna put the ball in the back of the net, guys. Like, so for Spain, that's why I would never understand Morata's Barat, situation with the clubs he goes to he goes to. But with Spain, because he, he he has the quality. And I think maybe with Spain, there's no division of I don't know, am I wanted here? Am I do they want me here? Do they Maybe because of that, because the, the quality is there. He can score, he can play. Maybe with Spain, that helps him. Uh, he's a national team. There's no, there's no. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, and it's the system. Yeah, like, it's the system because the the way Morata plays, he needs two fast wingers on on each side to either cross the side yeah. or create havoc and create space. And ex and now the way it looks with Nico Williams, he keeps his place on that light, left wing. You know, he's a menace, by the way. And, and yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, his he's contract, a menace. Guys, his contract is up next summer. Yeah, so watch he's, out he's here. coming to Barca. He's coming Barca to Barca. Is sniffing. Barca is sniffing. <laughs> yeah. But it's Bilbao, yeah. so, you know, they have a different way of dealing with things. Let's see if they're going to keep him for a few years. And, and Lamini Amal, I don't want to hype him up. You know, he's already everywhere now in Spanish media. He's obviously, no, you know, uh, in the same narrative. So, as you said, you don't want to... I don't want to be too excited. No, no, no. <laughs> no, because, no, because he's kind of <laughs> following the pathway uh -huh. of France for Fati and, and, you know, look where that ended up. No, no, no. Exactly. But, exactly. But, 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 just from first impressions, guys, like, this this kid is something else. No, no, no. Of course, it's, 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 that, that, that's the next Ballon d'Or winner. That's the next Ballon d'Or winner, yeah, see. I advocate... And you can Jay, you know they smoke weed. I there's no amount of there's no amount of, of analysis of laughter that can make me get excited against teams, you know, like you know, Cyprus and, and co. You are levels, bro, bro, it's Spain. It's Spain. Oh, you can you see know. signs. On 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 any day, on any day I could on any day I could have a good game against against you know Cameroon or not Cameroon anyway, it's just kidding. But not on, on any day, day I could not on, on any on a on on a on some on some on some on some day I can have a nice game against, um, you know, yeah, look, Mauritius, Mauritius, yeah, Mauritius or you know, Sao Tome. I'll be with you with the lead first if, time with that time. Wait, if if, like, if Osimhen yeah. doesn't score a hat trick against Mauritius or against Sao Tome and Principe, then what exactly is the hype about around him for? Do you get if this kid, you know, this is your kid from from Spain, you know, and I like it when the kid breaks through, right? Um, if this kid cannot playing in a no pressure game right then then what is he then what is he trying to do with his career so let these kids let these kids breathe you know and you know nico williams i think he's been doing it for a couple of years so maybe he's finally got his chance to play um but yeah um i think spain the problem with spain uh is the same problem that you know england have there's a bit of arrogance to there's a bit of arrogance that they they built up maybe rightly so you know with their 
with their three pits of the you know World Cup, you know Euros and everything, that um has almost has gone has not gone away, you know, and it almost comes back to to disturb them every for every major tournament. So they need to sort that out. But yeah, let's uh let's 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 get let's get into it. I, I is there any international break thing we haven't we haven't touched touch base on now? Hmm? Maybe answer. Funny, I saw a story. Maybe, um, maybe I, 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 saw, I mean, I, the only story about Ansi Flick is that um, it's the first time in in maybe I think I saw a stat that um, 90, 90 years, something like that. No. They haven't fired their manager. You know. Um, yeah. I think that is that is your clear. That's your clear like clear. You know, leadership at the top. Like they don't, they don't fire anybody. You know, they let you do your job. So when they fire you, you know that you're not, you're not doing well. Um, I have a quick... Can one Southgate's head after a draw against Ukraine? So that's the thing. Like, that's 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 like it's um the same way I won't get excited about you know a game against Andorra or against Cyprus or Georgia. I cannot, you know, in my normal mind, expect to play Ukraine and you know the draw. What is you have to ask? You have to ask yourself. What is the level of motivation for some of the players? You understand? Um, I, so I, I, I think it's, it's even good that you mentioned Southgate stand because me, I don't know if you guys talked about it before. Just to mention, I don't know what the guy is doing, and the conversation has started again. Oh, is, can, is it good enough to take England here? There, you need world conversation started again. But like we've talked about this thing before. How is I? I don't. I I can't understand this team selection. I really can't. I know it's just you because these are the these are the games that you have to play your team and then pick your team to a major tournament. Because how get getting to the quarterfinals and semifinals is not going to cut it anymore. You've been there for how long now? You're expected to go on and win major titles now. And I see these team selections. I'm like, the guys okay. obviously my guy conversation will keep coming up. How does he keep getting you know a place in the team where her players are really doing well? Coming and sitting on the bench mm. against Ukraine. If they are coming and sitting on the bench against Ukraine, what it, that means you really do not rate them. Yeah. Sagi knows his team. Sagi knows his team. I my deduction from his um his work is Sagi knows his team. And when you when you revert to major tournaments, um managers always revert to people they trust the most. Even though they haven't seen them train, they know, they know, they know, you know, I and this player. We we communicate clearly, and they understand what I want from them, right? In major tournaments, players who revert to is Calvin Phillips, you know, so his Declan this, Rice. So, but in this case, um, so but in this case, that's but in know. this case, that's a bit weird because what we're saying when we're seeing years upon years, international breaks on top of international breaks, tournaments on top of inter- tournaments, is that does this does it mean that you're not giving any other players? The room to come into that your trusted circle, because if a particular player that that you trust is not doing well, but he's another player can't seem to get a shout. So how do they get into your trusted circle? Because if you're going yeah. with the players that you trust, then I also believe that you need to find a balance with the national team being the players playing in, in, in their best forms. You need to find no, that balance. No, so, so- so I I believe that um for for managers that that are just starting out um and I'm not holding before Southgate because I really don't care um mm. for managers that are just starting out a national team job you know that is their that is um the the burden there's a burden of proof you know on the players to show the manager that they deserve to be there so they do that with their clubs and they come they get selected when you have been there for a long time right as long as Southgate has been there what you you tend to do if you tend to have more repetitive patterns, right? What I, what what that means is that you don't want to experiment as much anymore. So a kid could be having an explosive, you know, time at Brighton like Evan Ferguson. I have yeah. a bunch of guys here already. You understand? I want to keep the same thing because, again, the longer you are there without winning something, the more pressure and the more you know that you're getting closer to the end. So when you're closer to the end, the less room for experiment. You risk it all. You know, you know, you know, you don't, you know, you know, you don't risk as much anymore. You, you tend to do more safe safe things, right? So you do more safe picks, repetitive patterns. I don't want to. I don't want to bring in. I don't want to bring in. I don't want to learn about what Prowse. You know, all of a sudden, in my last in what I think was my last one year as national mm-hmm. team manager, right? Let another manager come and do that. I want to stick with my Declan Rice, my Calvin Phillips, my Jordan Henderson, and you know, yeah. I know what I get from them. 
<laughs> right. So anyway, I, that's, I, that's my. I that's my. See, I honestly don't see how it makes sense that Calvin Phillips hasn't played for a year in his club, and you say because you trust him and he's your trusted player, and you keep playing what's, what's over people what's, that are doing well. What's, what's the difference between you need to understand that national team is majorly a hierarchy. Go and check any team, any football country. is on merit. As long as Rupai, I can get that you have your trusted player, I don't see how it makes sense that a player hasn't played for his club for a year, but gets into his team over players that are sure? not only playing. But you know when 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 that I was when when it's when Daniel Alves when Daniel Alves when Daniel Alves was not at the top was did he, did he not get invited to Brazil? Are you listening? Was when, not at the when, top. Abi was not playing. I just mentioned that he was not playing for a year. There's a different way about Musa. And two is Danny Alves, with everything that he has done, Danny Alves proved himself for years, for years without end. And not again, I don't know if you listen to what I said. Calvin Phillips not having played for a year with his club, a mm. whole season, and his coach saying he was overweight and not in condition or whatever. But getting into the English national team, and again, like I said, people are going to say, no, it's just a game against Ukraine or a game that doesn't matter, you know, just to try them out. But those are the, those are the only games you have anyway for the other players who believe they are doing well and they deserve a chance to get a chance. Those are the only games you have. So, again, well, you have to fall back, okay. to, my, you have to fall back to, my, to, my, to my analysis of when you're closer to the end, you, you see what is right, but you decide to do what works for you. And those two things can exist, you know. I am one for players that our merits should play for the team, you know. And it's funny you guys are all of a sudden being um, being magnanimous today about players of merits because when I talk about Jaden Sancho, you know, you guys, you know, threw a fit. Do you get all of a sudden you want to have players of merits? Right it's not no, 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 but, Let's but, not but, 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 but it is not. right. Um, but speaking of speaking of speaking of that, I think we've still been proven uh, right, by the way, not to bring it back, again? but we've still been proven right. Me and Rufai. <laughs> to do what? To do what? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, that, right, that's you know? I saw where you tagged that me. What? I, I, yeah. I forgot to, to, I forgot the... to respond. You know, no, you tag me now. Anyway, 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 anyway let's... No, but, uh, you have to tag me now. I, I agree with Rufai on the point that there is a danger there that those players are going to become mm -hmm. complacent with time. You know? Because, okay, Kyrie Maguire, maybe he'll get a chance now. He'll be starting for United, so maybe there's more justification. But, you know... He will start he will start. <laughs> Who's gonna play? John Evan. He was. You have injuries. He will start, okay. my brother. He will start. Anyway, Maguire will anyway, start. anyway. He will start no, with no, but, anybody wants to play, thank you, thank you, bet today. He will start. No, but the, in in a, in a functioning ecosystem in a country, you want young players to be motivated by getting a call up, right? And and I I just fear that I, I agree with Rufai. There has to be a balance. Yes, have you trusted? <laughs> deputies and soldiers that, you know, have taken you places and, you know, you're going to die by that cross by playing them. But also, you know, play some, play some uh, players that are on current form, that are doing well in the Premier League. I don't know. There has to be a, a balance between them. I mean, that could have been doing that. I, but but I, mean, I think he's been doing that. To be, to be fair on guys out this, I think he's been inviting players and, you know, play them. I don't, I, that's why I'm, I'm surprised that Rufa is saying this. He will invite anyone from any club, especially in, in, in England, and he will play them. I've seen friendlies, I've seen English, different the English are good in speech, no be Latin. UB was going to move on to another another thing. <laughs> um I mean I mean I mean um uh, I think the point has been the point has been made across board, right? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I think the point has made across board, right? Um anyway. Uh, let's let's let's, let's, let's get into it, right? He said you know. English, don't be Latin. <laughs> well, well, uh, it's good. It's good. If you want to bring the violence up, you know, bring it, up, <laughs> bring, bring it higher and higher. That's that's <laughs> I'll preach. I'll preach in such conditions. You know, last week, last week, um, some people had too much fun, man. Some people had too much fun uh, in the comments, and um, I, uh -huh. I yeah, drag you me. I don't go check comments. Uh, no, they, they, when I, when I, when I, when I, well, some people had too much fun, you know, and I, I, and I that, love that, it. That, that, that listeners by themselves for, for comments constantly tell themselves, yeah. hey, what do you be doing all that they drag yeah. up like this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I spent I spent I spent time looking through it. I spent time looking through it. Um, all your feedback, all your feedback, and honestly, 
you know, first of all, I think I think what people don't realize is that I'm not repugnant to, to criticism, you know, um, or review. And anybody who knows me well knows that I'm conscious enough to review all my performances, all my performances, whether I'm working for this podcast or I'm doing a radio or TV or doing a gig for a multinational, you know, I always, I always, uh, I self-review. So let me be the first to tell you that um, that is that is the case with me. But um, I also want to be the first to mention that the last episode of the podcast, I wasn't trying to anchor the podcast, right? Um, it wasn't me trying to anchor. And if I was trying to anchor, which I wasn't, it wasn't my best day as anchor. Um, and as a, a viewer uh, myself, you know, I don't, I, it can be hard to watch uh, someone who is uh, being top heavy, you, you know, and badgering other people. It can be hard because I, I, I am very critical about TV presenters. So um, I, I I watch that back and I can understand some of the observations people had about that. Um, so I understand that um, and, and I apologize for that tough watch. You know, what could have been a tough watch for some times, you know, some, some different periods. Um, even though it still did some, some fair numbers, I don't think, I think that um, it's incredible that with all the comments, you know, we still didn't hit a thousand views. You know, you guys are not sharing the podcast enough. Uh, what exactly are you doing? But in the same breath, um, anyone who has followed me um, or our podcast, you know, fervently will be able to spot that I wasn't trying to anchor on that day. Um, the episode doesn't even start with me trying to anchor, right? I was simply joining on a conversation and I'd like to say, you know, this Bulgarian fraud here set me up, um, you know, <laughs> Uh, from from the very start, you know, set me up, right? Um, so for clarity, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only cut it out so people didn't get the yeah, context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> for clarity, the last episode did not have an anchor, uh, but again, I, I take responsibility for that, which is why uh, one of the comments from one of the the viewers uh, listeners gladdened my heart. You know, a guy called Popola said, and I just quote him exactly. He said, you, well, honestly, you, you know, while I understand how the pod could have come across this episode. It is also the first time I have seen UB go all United fan on the podcast, right? Uh, I went on to say big ups to Rufai and stand for holding the fourth, right? So um, the next time you have a comment to make about something that you don't like on the podcast, please make the comments by all means. Go ahead and make the comments, right? Um, because what's the point of belonging to this incredible community that we'll be able to create if you don't have an opinion? I love it. You know, the truth is actually most times... I am reading the comments sometimes. I'm having a good laugh. And I'm laughing because I know that some of the comments are right, some are wrong, and sometimes you're just not communicating what you have in your mind. And I understand it. You know, it's hard to put everything in your mind in text, right? Um, but but that's pretty much it, you know. And I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be you know begrudge anybody for having an opinion. Um, so from me, I'd always uh, you know, love and respect the the affection you give us and i wish everybody the best you know um so that is my that is my one fell swoop response to everybody no again uh, from my side you know like you said some people get a little bit too i don't know worried that you know someone got offended or you know it's all the banter guys it's all the conversation like i told the uh, UB after the podcast last time in bulgaria we have a saying the truth is always born in an argument, you know? So the fact that sometimes it looks like you're arguing or, you know, when I'm listening to you guys in the studio, or, you know, having a conversation, that's, that's all, you know, it's the greatness of football. You know, sometimes we get, you know, a little overzealous after, you know, our win, after team wins. Uh, sometimes we have a brilliant point, you know, it, it, it's all, this is part of football, you know, we're not, I don't think we're pretending to be, Sky Sports panel here with, you know, journalists, with whatever that's supposed to mean, you know, with a suit and tie and all that. So I think this is the brilliance of the Hindsight Podcast that it unifies a bit of everything, a bit of analysis, a bit of banter, you know, a bit of fandom, you know, this is what yeah. we present. Stan, what are we expecting for this week? You know, the uh, 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 club football coming back. I hear you. But personally, I have, me, I have two things that I want to talk about, right? Two things. Okay. And we've done this before on this podcast where it's um it's um we don't just go with oh this is the game happening this weekend. There are topical issues, you know. I will try to drive conversations, I will try to create a different kind of narrative. Two things I I, I that that just came to my mind. 
before just before I joined, the moment I Wallace, I dropped Wallace call, I saw I saw Fabrizio's tweets about uh Bonucci. You know, a story broke not too long ago about Bonucci saying he's gonna he's gonna uh sue so, so Juve. Juventus, Juventus. Some, yeah. for some things. And so I saw Fabrizio's tweet about Bonucci where he said that Allegri reported some fake news about hmm. him. That Juventus said they made it clear to him early that he wasn't part of the plan. And he was like, that's not true. He said the moment the season ended, he told Juventus that I'm ready to stay. I'm ready to remain yeah. in the team as fifth or even sixth choice centre-back nice. to help the younger players coming through. And that was the conversation. And they never said anything to him about not wanting him in the team up until July 13th. Knowing fully well that the season starts in August. So by July 13th, more or less you have about a month before the season was supposed to start. And so uh, there, there, there's probably more story there. There's probably so, a lot more okay. there that would, so, that would come out in the coming days. So, so, so Rufai, I to... please. Okay. I, I just really want to say something. So I have a school of thoughts concerning all this. I think that I, I was talking to someone. I said, if players can have loyalty bonus on their contract, I think there should be disloyalty bonus as well from the club side because you can't you can't just make it a one-sided you know agreement. As much as a player can be disloyal, a club too can be disloyal, and it's so sad that that's why I, when I when I see players try to run out their contract, I'm always very happy because clubs can be very ruthless. They can be very brutal when they are making decisions, especially when you are not at the top anymore. There's a reason. There's a reason this same person has been loyal to you over the years. The simple thing is to be truthful. Just, just so, make us understand. I, I, okay. I, see, I, I, I think, I think you have it. Where, where I was going to was that. Have we come to a point? Have we come to a point in the game where we actually need more players to speak in public, even before they get to the point where they they know that they are done in the game? Because we, 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 it was one of the things I mentioned last week. A lot goes on in, in, in behind the scenes, but it's also it's almost like the, is is this unwritten rule? It's almost that is this on 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 written you know rule that oh the player can never speak against the club in public. The player can never speak against the manager in public, and I'm all for it. And you remember last week I, I said I mentioned the fact that for me. Every situation is different. Every case is peculiar. I don't mm -hmm. agree with, oh, because I back the manager every time the player is against him, I'm going to back the manager at all times. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. every situation is different. The, whatever might have gone on behind the scenes has created this uh, 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 discord. We don't have a full picture of it. So have we come to a point in, 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 in the game mm -hmm. where... We actually need more players to be able to come forward and speak about, look, what is being reported in media about me is not true. Because what we're seeing is that most definitely players are, are the ones that are being told to, to suck it up and ha handle the bad press and move on with their game and, you know, speak with their, with their football on the pitch. And it's all well and good. It's easier. It's very easy to say. But when you then factor in the fact that when the clubs don't want you anymore, they can actually instigate the media against you. Easily. So, so what do you do in that situation? Is this still a case of suck it up? You can't speak against them in public. Stan will go oh, first. Yeah, it, okay. it goes both it goes both ways. It goes both ways nowadays, and you have to be very careful with uh, what you tell the public. And you have to know the platform also that the players get because, you know, we talked about Ronaldo last time, you know, with him last year at United, it was different, it was different rules. You know, it was if he wants to get out of a club, no matter if there's a contract in place or not, when he has, I don't know how many billion followers online, you know, he can make it happen. He can appear on in an interview 
you know, drag all the dirty laundry of the club and, and make it happen. So I think, yeah, the club and the players. Well, have just, to one, just one thing, Stan. I'm mm. sorry. This is this is this is unbelievable because I, I've never been to I've never been to Old Trafford, never been to Stamford Bridge, any of the stadiums, you know, in 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 in, in England. As a matter of fact, never been to England. Now, I was speaking to a couple of my senior senior colleagues that we play <laughs> football together on Sundays, and these are guys that are well traveled, United fans, Arsenal fans. They watch the game at the Emirates every now and then. They watch the game at the uh, uh, at Old oh, Trafford. Trafford. And these people were telling me that everything Ronaldo said about the facility was absolutely true. That if you if you go to Old Trafford, you go into restrooms, you see the height that that waste waste water in the restroom, the height that it takes in the restroom. So they're trying to tell me that it is actually filthy in some parts of that facility. So, which uh, I've never been there. I'm, 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 I'm talking about what people see, people that have gone there multiple times. So, if that's the case, where players see these things happening and you know they realize that there's bad press about me in the media, there's you, they, 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 my, I'm, I'm absolutely being killed in the media for something I didn't do, for something that's wrong, for something that never happened. What? what how do we expect them to handle it? Have we come to a point where, because I, I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, oh, we talk about players, uh, oh, we need, we, they need mental health, help, maybe at the end of the game or when they are playing, they need this, they need that. And I yeah. heard you be, before I joined, or as I, was, as, I, as I was joining, that the players are still human beings. So if this goes on, because we have to also remember, the same way we say that these players are now, are now soft, because it's social media age, they care about social media much more now. It's the same way, back in the day, the clubs didn't have social media to use against them. The managers yeah, didn't have social right. media to use against them as well. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's both, it both ways. Well, I don't know what you guys think about it. Like, like I said earlier, I think that the, now the major issue I have is, I think if players want to, you know, voice out, if, if they have a, a reason to voice out, I think the best way it's been, to be done it or to do that is to you know go through their agents because I've always had this mentality that when when you are under a contract with whatever person you want to have a contract with, you need to be yeah. careful whatever comes out, you know, whatever statements you make because easily they can it can be used against you. So, so there, there, there's there's most definitely I, I believe there should, there most definitely will be clauses of confidentiality in those contracts that they sign. So obviously a, any company in the world, any company in the world doesn't they will tell you that you these are there are issues that should be solved in the office. There are issues that shouldn't be, you know, that shouldn't be made public. And I think what Stan should did was was quite um, I won't say over the line, but but I, I felt that it was it was was way too much. He could have just um, had a conversation with he literally conversation. called his coach a liar. <laughs> what did you say? He literally called his coach a liar. Yeah, yeah, you get I, I feel that they it, it got when 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 you are spoken with the coach. And you feel that there is still no progress in whatever you guys have agreed, then you can come out to start making statements. But you, you, you just went out and start posting different things. Honestly, honestly, I, I, no manager would see a player doing well and not playing. That's the truth. No manager will see a player who wants to improve and not playing. And even the fans of Man United always came at uh, Sancho, you know, underperformed. The guy, they bought it for a whole lot of money. They bought for yeah. a lot of money. You know, a lot of these players don't even... Ronaldo said when he was at Man U, he says most of these young players are just particular about what the what people... The way people see them on social media, you know, they, they, they really don't care about playing football itself. So I feel that Sancho was just using that as, oh, let me get some people to my side. Uh, let me use this as a cover-up for my underperforming. This, this, that. Or if I was to be Man United and like, I trust Man they will, they will make decision. I feel that he shouldn't play anymore. You know, you shouldn't play. You can't come at the put that way. It's, it's quite... There, there are different things That's, when you are being loyal to the club. But guys, what are we talking about here at, at the end of the day? We're talking about malfunctioning clubs. Man United, Juventus, you know? So I think even though the ecosystem has changed, yes, the, the players have a big following. You need to be careful how you address them. It can come bite you back. 
I think that at the end of the day, the basics of football management are the same. So if your club is functioning well, if your mm-hmm. dressing room is a healthy environment where the manager addresses you face to face when he has a problem with you or he doesn't believe in you, I think still at the end of the day that the results are the same. Why is yeah. no one coming out from Brighton, you know, and, yeah. and making a big mess in social media? Why is no one coming because out from winning. Brentford? Exactly. Why is no one coming out from Brentford speaking about Thomas Frank? Because at the end of the day, these guys are man, man managers. They know how to address any issues before it hits the head top. on. They don't allow it first. Mm. So I think that the, even though some of the semantics have changed and, and the money has changed and everything, the basics of, of management are still the same. And when, you, when the club is not functioning well and when the manager is not doing his job properly, because that's what we were saying last week about Tim Hag, at the end of the day, this is part of your job. You know where you're going. It's not Ajax anymore. You know, with all the respect to Ajax, you know, it's a football institution. But, you know, yeah. you're going to a different level now. All the eyes are going to be on you. Every single move is going to be scrutinized. So, at the end of the day, it's still you're facing a group of 25 people. And if you're being honest, if you're being frank with each one of them, because each one of them has a career. If you tell Sancho in June, look, look, man, you know, I really wanted this to work out. But you know what? You don't fit my system. You don't train well. Whatever the reason is going to be, Sancho's going to tell you, thank you, sir. Go talk to his agent and go find a club. You have two months. But when you're disrespecting someone, when you're throwing him out after a loss and making it seem like it's all about him, of course, yeah. he's going to go and use his weapons and, and, and fight back. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I mean, not, 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 not that, I, not that I, I... I just get a feeling that, you know, when players retire, we we'll get a lot of stories, quite a number of them. I also wanted to just quickly mention, we, because I see everybody's mentioning the 16-year-old at Barcelona now. You know, I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly. I, I stand Yamal. very helpful to that. Lamin Yamal. Lamin Yamal. Fantastic. No tongue twisters there. Uh, with, how, with how Pedri was handled. Because remember, Pedri played quite a number of games. That, that breakout season. And what an incredible talent Pedri is. I haven't watched him a lot, say, over a huge amount of games, but you don't really need to watch him for that much to see how talented he is. The, the, the way he touches the ball is his, his brilliance. He sees the game far ahead of his age. Far, far ahead of his age. Such a brilliant talent. Now it feels like he's beginning to struggle with injuries. Could that be down to how it was managed at the beginning? Because we're seeing more and more, you know, children. Because they're children. He's 16 years old. When I was growing up, 16? Yes, there are some responsibilities that you can have. Yeah. Like making sure, you know, you get your house chores done. You know, maybe the most responsibility that is a big deal that you can have is getting to school on your own and coming back on your own. And, you know, all of these things, I get that in that ecosystem, a footballer, you can get, but at 16, you're a child. You're a child. And when you're being carried as this superstar, playing all of these games, sometimes it might not even be injuries. It might be mental fatigue. Most times, sometimes. You get into the, you get into the circle of, of responsibility too early. Oh, I'm carrying this team. I need to score, or they don't win. And you see all the criticism because again, that's where it gets to. When you now underperform, you don't play well in this game. Win. Sorry, my network, my network was uh, misbehaving for a minute. But no, I, 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 I'm sure you guys got me. I'm sure you guys got me. So please. No, in this particular case, I completely agree with you. You know, and we have the recent example of Ansu Fati as well. You know, that he's been troubled in injury. Pedri, in his first season, he played over 70 games. You know, remember he went Ooh. to that Olympic Games. Yeah. You know, he, was, he played every single game for Barcelona. And, but for, in this particular case now with Laminia Mao, part of it has been that he has Moroccan background as well. So Spain... I think there's a rule where he plays four games, official games for Spain. He can no longer join another national team. 
So that they're trying to, you know, secure him basically for the future. That's why he's kind of played and been involved in the last few games. And Barca, mm-hmm. they've had um, they've had Rafinha suspended in the first few games. So that right flank after the departure of Dembele, you know, there's been a, an opening for him. So I do think it's yeah. been over exaggerated a bit because of the context. But uh, on the whole, I completely agree that we need to protect these young players because, you know, look at Ansu Fati, you know. He had the exact the exact same profile. Break up, broke out at 16, first goal, you know, amazing. I think he had a stat at one point where he had like 12 shots and nine goals or something crazy like this. And look at him now, you know, not saying that Brighton is a step down, but certainly his, his you know, his career didn't pan out the, the way we would we should. So, yeah, we should be careful with the amount of pressure and expectation we put, we put on these kids. Okay. Um, I think for me, I think it's down to, you know, the the shortage of talent around the world. Um, back in the days when I still, yeah, when I still watch football, you, when you have... You don't watch it anymore. Yet, like, very well. When I, when, 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 when you have a 16-year-old who is just, you know, coming to the limelight, you try to ease him in. Even Lionel Messi was done, that was 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 protected that way too. You get. So I feel that when you look at the squad and you you don't really have someone who is even as good enough compared to this 16 year old guy, you really don't have a choice. You know, you, you, before before you you have top guys who are on their game any day anytime, week in week out, always performing. Even the 16 year old guy cannot even see them. So it shows that. I feel that there should be more of more of harnessing raw talent than just pinpointing from the academy. Guy, yeah, there was a time Barca would promote about about five, five, four, you know, six uh, Lamisia boys, and they will, they will, they will be they will be bringing them in gradually. But now you can you only have the one you have. You want to kill that one. The one you can graduate from the Lamisha, you want to finish him off. On I don't get money now. On I don't on I don't sign to be talents. On I don't get money. No, even the ones we don't sign for even the ones we have signed, waiting happen. We signed Coutinho. Look at them, Billy. How many games did he even play for us? You get a lot of these players that you expect that okay, these guys were always banging for us. These guys always perform every week for us. We 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 yeah. still ended up depending on young players. It's, so you really cannot blame this club because if you look at your own part of, oh, you guys are overstressing these guys, you're overplaying them, but they are the best legs in the squad. So why would you keep someone who is as good as that on the bench? It wasn't like this before. Like I said, before, you don't have a 16-year-old who will just easily break into a team. You can rarely yes. see that before. But now it happens. Even in you check different clubs around the world, it happens. You start seeing a player of 17 who has played over 100 games. You can't see that before. You can yeah, barely see Saka. that before, but now... Look at Saka. You know, it's amazing he, how he stayed fairly injury-free, the, the amount of games he's played since he's been 17. Yeah. There was this kid There was this kid that was at... Um, was it Celtic or... Do- no, was it Celtic? Is it Celtic? Uh, then Billy, one, one young guy. One very small guy. Mukoku. Is it Mukoku? Yeah. <laughs> then Billy, no, not Then Billy, boy. Yeah, Mukoku, Mukoku. Yeah, German, German kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. no, there's on there's on the in Celtic. Then okay, that's like some years back. Like 15 years, yeah, that time. Yeah, you remember you know, the <laughs> that guy did again. You know, it's crazy. I, 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 don't, I don't want us to I don't want us to stretch. So we're just gonna go through uh, uh um, predictions in the Premier League. Obviously, that's the that's the uh, uh popular whatever. But Stan, first of all, La Liga this weekend was was what are we what are we looking at? Well, to be honest. This this round is is gonna be really good because the top three teams, for the first time since the start, they have like really really good tests. You know, mm. um, Barca is playing Betis at home. You know, a yeah. Betis team that's, that, a, that's a tough game potentially. Yeah, and, and you know, it's been a Barca that let's be honest, they haven't started on full cylinders yet. You know, they've been again getting results, but they haven't been brilliant. You know, with the way they play, so. You know, and and guys, I keep repeating it. Barca doesn't play at the Camp Nou this season, and and this, mm. I I believe it will affect them, because mm. when you're a team that is it is used to having ninety plus thousand every single week supporting them, in, you know, in one place, we saw it with Real Madrid when they had to play it at the at the Di Stefano. It wasn't the same. Yeah, 
It wasn't the same, yeah. No, yeah. And, and Betis, you know, there's a weird thing happening there because Isco, you know, he was on loan last year at Sevilla, the city rivals. Now Betis have signed him. And, and I feel like he's got something to prove now. You know, he started Four really man well. Of the match I started yeah. well. Got a goal. So watch out. Watch out for for uh, Betis at the Camp Nou. And also Real Madrid with uh, another, you know, Champions League level team. Real Sociedad. You know, and we got to talk about this kid. Speaking of kids, Kubo. You know, Kubo. Yeah. Is that guy still a kid? Yeah, I don't know if he's a kid. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's, been a, he's, been a kid. he's been a kid for like five years now. <laughs> true, true, true. No, nah, but what a talent. And, uh, you know, it's such a shame David Silva got injured. He's 22. And, you know, after... He's 22. Yeah, 22. He's still, <laughs> I think Real Madrid still has rights on him to sign him back, I think, uh, next summer. So they're still keeping dibs on him. He has the class to, to be up there, you know. He's uh, super tricky, lots of goals in him, assists. And, and Real Sociedad, you know, they're, they're in the Champions League. They're going to be doing damage this season. I, I really feel bad for David Silva. I, I, I wanted to see, you know, the last dance of him in the yeah. Champions League. But unfortunately... You know, we, we're not gonna see him again on on, on the on the pitches. The the wizard, as they call it, El Mago, the the Spanish wizard. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it's just two points, like you said. Barcelona haven't started. Uh, uh, IBK, are you you're optimistic for this season? You guys are gonna defend your well, title. I I honestly don't think so. Um, I feel that the 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 coach still has a lot to learn. Um, when Stan was what, talking what, about what, sorry, IBK, sorry, IBK, what, what's the what's this news about Barcelona's style of play under uh, 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 Xavi? Uh, Deco has come out to say it's gonna extend, I think, up until 2025 or thereabout. What's this news? I've been hearing that the style of play under Xavi is, is atrocious, it's, it's yeah, it's yeah, it, 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 the, it, it is not we, we are not as dominating as, as we used to. That's why I, I'll quite disagree with Stan's point of. Maybe we, we are not playing at the camp now. Even when we were at the camp no last season, we saw how we struggled. Um, I remember one of the was he against PSB or in the Europa League? How how how, how was as if we were playing away from home? So most of our Frank games, Frank most, Frank. yeah, Frankfurt, yeah. Most of our games, you know, it, it, we struggle. The transition is 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 so poor. The the control of the midfield is 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 not like what we used to know. Conversion rate is as well really poor. And I think Lewandowski as well is maybe he's aging. I, I feel that there's there's need to 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 look away from him. I feel that we have we, we need to start understanding the fact that yeah, Xavi is not um Xavi of the Barcelona we used to know as a player who we love and who we respect. There needs to be a commanding tune when Barca is playing anything. You play Girona is the same way, you play Osasuna is the same way. You play, you know, these average teams and you start racking, looking for how you score just a goal. So the style quiet, of play... Quiet, yeah, reality uh, check, reality check. No, no, that's... Well, see, well, yeah, I know the lie to myself. We we've signed a lot of players. We, see, if, if, if uh, I've said it, if, 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 Xavi, if Xavi doesn't win anything this season or if we continue this way, it's better we, we let him understand the priority of the club. You know, that's that a light club. That's a light club like Chelsea, clubs like Man United. They will take away their their you know the, the relationship they have for the player as a footballer. You are a manager now, you need to be responsible for a lot of things. But uh, Abike, Abike, when when the results are there, I don't I don't understand this obsession with, with no, Barcelona. Barca, no, Barca, stand, stand. Of a style oh, of a style oh, of play. Let's start making points. No, I don't, it's only Barcelona, the only club that has this obsession of a certain way we need to play and all this. Delivered the La Liga title last season, keeping the most clean sheets in the league. And you know, yes, low scoring, but still getting results. So why is it that you know, because Xavi doesn't play this Guardiola tiki taka style that we're used to, you know, we we now need to be scrutinizing him. As long as he gets results for me, he needs to be in job. The, and, and for example, Real Madrid, this is how they operate. They don't have a style of play that they, you know, that the managers needs to follow. Bring in results. That's what we judge you. Uh, okay, Stan. Now this is it. The reason Barca won the La Liga last season was down to Real Madrid's 
poor, terrible performance. It wasn't as if Madrid were giving Barca a run for their money. Madrid were practically dashing them the, the, the La Liga, you know, every weekend. And the same thing is happening this season. When Madrid, when they are up there, when, when, when their level is high, Barca was always struggle. Now, this is what I mean by style of play. Madrid, Madrid plays any team and you see the dominance in, in their style of play. You don't, I don't, I'm not saying we should play tiki taka, we should play direct football, we should play transitional football. I mean, you are a top club. There should be evidence. There should be, it should be obvious that you are a top club. We cannot be playing against Osasuna, struggle to win, play against Juna, struggle to win. This same thing happened last season. By the time we meet quality side, top quality team, we don't get the results. And well, like I said, I look at the teams you played all through last season. Look at the quality teams you played all through last season. How many of the games did we win? We can count, it, I think, one or two. Even against Man United, that were struggling. So, Stan, now my club, you know if you tell me which time, which time I know, Stan. Forget <laughs> you this thing. Forget hey, you no, this no, thing. Uh, no, 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 no. I have nothing against that. I'm just saying there seems to be a propaganda around Barca that, you know, there's a... must play. Why do you have to be a slave to a philosophy, you know? I, yeah. For me, it's all about results. We're in the results business. But I, I do get your point. Barca was not a team that dominated most games, you know? They, they relied yeah. on their defense. They relied on a world-class season by Ter Stegen. For me, the best uh, goalkeeper mm -hmm. in Europe last season. And But again, are, are we not depreciating their efforts to the team by saying we should be more attacking, we should be more... Dominated, you know, what about the defense? You know, Araujo, you know, Drew Kunda having a brilliant season. Baudet coming out, another youngster, you know, already we're talking about. He was so good last season that Barca needed to offload Jordi Alba already because they have a starting Jordi Alba, yeah. Back. So I just feel like, um, yeah, as long as results are there. And that, that's why I said the last time, Xavi will be judged this season for me on a European performance. Because, yeah. you know, Barca... Barca has been embarrassed, let's be honest, in, in the last few years on, on the European stage. Even last season, like you said, with Eintracht, you know, losing a game with, with the German fans in Barcelona. So for me, the European Knights, under, under the lights, under that, the lights. that's when we would judge yeah. Xavi and his team. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> just, just to move quickly, some big games in the Serie A this weekend as well. Uh, Juventus against Lazio, and then you got the... The Milan, the Milan, the Milan, the Inter, 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 Milan, Inter yeah. Milan at home. I, I, I that obviously going to be interesting. Both teams have started relatively well to the season, so uh, I, I reckon, I reckon both teams to score very sure in that one. In your bond is not here to give us those sure bad guys. But let's make we let's quickly just do predictions. Go through what's happening <laughs> in, the, in the in the Premier League. Liverpool are back away to Wolves. You know, an opportunity probably to see to see the new signing. In midfield, let's see what he can bring bring to the midfield. So, IBK, I'm going to start with you, then I'll come to Stan. Uh, uh, Liverpool away to Wolves. Well, uh, I think Wolves have not been convincing as well this season. Um, Liverpool, uh, the only game, the only game it seems they struggled was against Chelsea. I see them getting maximum points in that one. All right. Uh, Aston Villa Crystal Palace. I think this is Aston Villa Crystal Palace. Another another potentially huh? sweet game. Yeah, I, I I think I think I think Diaby has been very instrumental, you know, since the start of the season for them. Um easy win for Aston Villa and Diaby to score. Easy win. Wow. Um yeah. Fulham Fulham at home to Luton Town. Ah. Huh? Like everyone predicted, um, Luton Town, they, they don't seem like they, they, they were prepared to come into the Premier League. It seems it was like a miracle. They still don't see themselves in the Premier League. So I don't see how they will get a point, you know, a way to, to form. I, I don't think it's possible for them to win. United Brighton. United at, 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 at Old Trafford ah. against Brighton. IBK, quick yeah, one. Yeah, Old Trafford. Um, Brighton to win. <laughs> <laughs> Why you got the pick up? I know that I went to your top from the beginning. You missed that time. Eh, you said eh, key there. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Spurs against Sheffield. 
Spurs at home against Sheffield. <laughs> um, uh, Spurs, they all are big. Sure is three points this us. weekend. Sure is. It's too sure. Oh my, it's West too Ham, sure. West Ham, it's West Ham sure. to welcome almighty Manchester City. A draw. Put a your draw. money on that. A draw. Score, fair, score draw. Course. Score draw, yeah. West Ham, West Ham, score they want to. Newcastle, Newcastle, score draw. against Brentford. I think Newcastle will win. A very slim one. One nil. Okay. Bournemouth, Bournemouth, Chelsea. Chelsea. One nil to one. Ah, uh, now easy thing for Chelsea. Chelsea will finally, you know, get a breath of fresh air against Bournemouth. Three points. Everton, Arsenal. 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 <laughs> bro, bro. There are two teams that if you have a lot of, a lot of money, you should put it on them relegating this season. Yeah. One looting town and the second yeah. Everton. Everton cannot ex escape relegation. This is it's going to be total embarrassment against us now. Fantastic. Don't write it down. Uh, Absolute embarrassment. Stan, let's start off with your yeah. with your dear Arsenal. A way to Everton. Yeah, I go for Arsenal. Easy win. Yeah. Without missing, without missing words. Uh Chelsea away to AFC Bournemouth. Now this one. This one's a sticky one, still. It's hey, not the, there's nothing sticky about it. <laughs> Do your agenda. Don't forget. No, 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 no. No, no. Not about Chelsea. <laughs> Bournemouth has a new manager. And I've seen this guy in Spain. You know, he's going to... I think he's going to take time, obviously, to instill his ideas. Yeah. But Bournemouth, you know, they've started decent as well. You know, they've got Solanke, a few players there. Yeah. Uh, I go, go, go. All right, go. go. Mm, that's a very safe one. I like it. I like it. Newcastle, Brentford. Newcastle. I think they'll, uh, they, they've had a bit of a tough schedule in the first few rounds, and I think they'll yeah. go back now to winning ways. But it's Brentford, though. Well, it's Brentford, know. it's true. But I think yeah. they'll have enough to win. City travel to the London Stadium. City, City West Ham. Listen, guys, last year, until like the last few rounds, I was betting against City. I was betting against City. <laughs> I had to rip up. Numerous slips. I'm not betting against City again. Man City to win. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Spurs, Sheffield. Spurs, Sheffield. Spurs, over 2.5. I think Madison started brilliantly there. If yeah. some plays through the middle, there's going to be goals. Uh, United, Brighton. Now, that's a, that's a tasty one. That's, a, that's, the, that's the, the biggest goal goal you're going to get this weekend. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say goal goal. And Maguire on goal, if you want to be a little bit of a <laughs> Come on, Stats. Come on. That's unfair. Fulham, Fulham looks in. Fulham. Mm. Aston Villa, Crystal Palace. Villa. Villa to win. Uh, Liverpool away to Wolves. Liverpool to win. Maybe concede, but win. 3 4 1. All right, then. All right. I, th I, think, I think we've. Um, We've done pretty decent for, for, for this recording, this episode. Considering the circumstances hmm. and everything that has transpired. Lacunli <laughs> Omomi, always banging in the goals. Is it yeah. is it bridge you want? Is it hat trick? Always coming in strong. Yeah, what position do you there? play yes, on, like, on, on Sundays? You said? What positions do you play on, on in the Sunday league? Man. I'm not even trying. To, I'm not trying to prop myself, but I'm a, a serious bowler. You know, it's it's it's, it's five aside with what one goal. Do you play? Ah, <laughs> right. But my brother, can you allow me answer, please? Ah. I, it is myself. I want to sell. You don't know if Stan has a slot in the third division in Spain. <laughs> Leave me alone, please. <laughs> <I want it. laughs> right. So you know, it's five aside with a goalkeeper. So it it, it, it it's pretty difficult to. To hold out a position and say, you know, so, you know, but 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 by trade, I'm a midfielder. Floating. But in the course of my in the course of my career, box to box, I'm, floating. I've done a job. I've done a job on every part of the field as a winger, as a left winger, as a as a as a right back. Even any as a, medal for that? Any medal for that? <laughs> Who would you say? What player that comes close to your you comes close have... to your profile? I think he's got his internet has gone off. Let him come back. Floating midfielder. 
<laughs> he, with no medal. Floating <laughs> Mikida with no he medal. Capping, he was capping too much, the network. <laughs> 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 When I don't teach Stan Walk, when I don't teach Stan Walk, he said the cup. Rufai was not here this. I go tell her. No, no, no. No, but we need some footage. Well, you need to go Sunday and uh, and and make some videos of him playing, you know, oh, and insert it into this podcast. I'll do that. Stan, do you play football? Yeah, also, you know. On amateur, obviously level, but seven aside, I prefer seven aside. You know, a bit, a bit more closer to the real thing. Um, okay, what position? I play as a number ten. You know, that's my wow. optimal. You know, my my hero was Dennis Burkamp, so I modeled his game. <laughs> I, mo- I modeled, I modeled my game. Obviously, I'm not near um, you know, as wow. good as him. But I like to provide well, well, score. Well, you know, what's the name of your Sunday league club? Right now, we're going to play uh, for a team called Fiasco. Fiasco FC, so make that <laughs> what you want. Are you, are you, is, it, is it just for fun or you're being paid? No, 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 it's fun. And we have to pay, if anything, you know, to, to participate and to get it organized and everything. But no, seven aside, uh, artificial pitches. But okay. it's fun, you know, it's fun. I, I like to... To still play and you know keep keep fit and and, and he, as you know as a football man like when you play the game there's nothing better to give you perspective than than, than being on the pitch you know yeah yeah you're right Sam do you do you have any relationship with any top academies in Spain no no I wish I I did but because I have I have talents I have a bunch of talents I'm here, surprised man. that yeah. you guys are still here uh, <laughs> you know what you know what Sam talk where you go. <laughs> He said you yeah. didn't cap too much. Now why the internet cut? Guys. He said they do it. They cap too much. <laughs> I will ban, I think I'll ban you for, for coming to this podcast. Your violence will be talking too much for me. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you in Spain. Oh, in Spain. Oh, oh. But you know what I'm going to do? Stan, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll send you a recording of me playing so you can yeah. help me get his deal. So you tell me At least I'll film you this Sunday. So I will, I will try to come. You say what you need to make I can't film you this Sunday. Ah, my God. <laughs> put, it in the, put it in the podcast. We'll use it for the podcast now. That's what I'm talking. Uh-uh. If I wear your medal, you never win any medal since. So. See this, you cannot tell me now. Money. When I go when I go my apartment house, medals choke. See, I did, nah. see. If you hold up one neck, you choke. You fool for house. <laughs> what, what player would you say is the closest to your attributes? What current player? Uh, What kind of player? Let me think. Stan said his own is Dennis Betchcam. No, fantastic, I, you know, fantastic. So I modeled so Stan, my game. Yeah. You, you know what's interesting, right? If you see, and the, 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 the good thing is that evidence took. I don't just explain. So when I when, when I when I used to train, when I used to train, I had people like give me like different nicknames. So there were people that used to call me Makalili. There were people that used to call me Debele. Debele because my name is Musa as well. So so it's a and quite honestly, coincidentally, I think it's a it's it, it somewhere in between there. The only difference is that obviously I don't have the physical attributes that the belly has, but it is something there in between because the more mature I got, the more technical I, I was able to be. So so now I play, I, I almost play like I'm JJ now. I'm not even captain. <laughs> <laughs> we need some footage. We need some footage. To uh, I, 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 I trust. I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. If I, if I did this before, I would have had footages that would, you, nobody can dispute. So great goals on the pitch. Some great skills. Great assists. I became. You are muted. You are muted. Knee injury. Knee injury made you go on professional. I mean. <laughs> for the, for the enough. I never, I never had any of this. I never had any of this um, major knee, ankle. I never had any of those. So you were major simply not injuries. good enough. You were simply not good enough. So you were not good I, enough. <laughs> you were <laughs> surplus so requirement. You were no, you you surplus yeah. requirement. Like, like Santo. <laughs> <laughs> when, when will you make your own statement? I'm waiting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, I mean, I, I, United, I, honestly, United can catch a break, man. Sancho, <laughs> Anthony, uh, who, who else now? They don't, I mean, who, I'm expecting Maguire, to see the, the under 19s. Maguire, I'm expecting yeah. the under 19s to play against Brighton this weekend, you know? <laughs> Look, that game, I think United would need to pull out a, a really solid performance to get a point. You guys should get check a result. Check I swear. Uh, Maguire's mom has made a statement. Have you seen it? On you no. know all these English people, where were they when they were attacking uh, Lukaku? It, look, at the end of the day, man, it is, what what it is. It is the same animal that you guys created, so mm. you gotta live with it. Exactly. But yeah, well, let's do it. Oh. Let's do it this Sunday. Let's Uwala. do it this Sunday. Uwala. What time do you, you guys? Know, I'm off. We we play. We we actually start by nine p.m. nine to eleven p.m. Okay. I don't know why we used to play earlier than that before, but facility issues started. So now we could only get a slot that's that lit. As in, it's just crazy from 9 p.m. I mean, I like it because it's, it's closer to midnight. It's more comfortable then. It's cool. It's, it's just that, you know, people, some people who maybe would have to Logic. travel. You know. Champions League, Champions League times. You know, yeah, under the lights. <laughs> that's actually that's actually how we play under the lights. I, to be honest, I don't like playing fun. that late because uh, I don't like eating before football. So then it, mm. it it makes it weird. Like, what do you do? Wait all day? You know? Yeah. So I prefer mornings. To be honest, that that, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's just it's just if the sun for here catch you, the sun in this place. Or the days oh, my wife's mom, really mom, my wife's mom made a statement like I, an hour ago. Yes, no. I saw it. I'm really, really not interested in it. Really, really not interested. But I think, I think there's there is this targeted abuse at, at Maguire. But it's the same thing. But it, it, I don't. It's what we've always talked about, though. Like now, we we now need to care because it's Maguire. But but. but I'm on the guy's mental health then. then <laughs> serious. Lukaku no get mental health. Eh, now, you don't say Lukaku no get mental health. Eh, uh, who else again? I, I don't even know, man. Look. So, Rufai, Rufai, what was the way out for him now? If you were my guy, what was the way out What of Untiti that refused to leave Barca that you people insulted? Eh, uh, now, great weight and all of them. Eh, uh, so. No, you know, my guy, I own. My guy, I own. My, my belief, now. right? Stand. And and here's my own belief. We talk about players always moving for money. Money is always important. And I agree, right? But we are in a position where, first things first, for every player, it's like a musician. A musician that's not allowed to release music is miserable. Will be miserable. Because when you're not allowed to release, to release music, you don't even get a chance to maybe having a hit record. To enjoy your fame. Is it with a footballer? If you don't play, there's a problem. So Maguire knew before the start of the season that playing playing opportunities might be get an opportunity to go outside. Guess what? Outside of Manchester United, Maguire will play every single game for a team like West Ham. And you still get paid some tangible amount of money. And you're in London. Not even tangible. Really, really good amount of money. Really good. Because yeah, I hear with, with Mohamed Kudus coming in, he's on some really good wages. With Maguire, you will get some really good money. So you can't eat your cake and have it. It's, look, if you decide to stay inside that club with all the madness going on in the club, even if you want to pick a, a, a team and say, I'm going to remain and fight for my, 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 my position, I think there's a lot going on around United. I, I mentioned it last, last week. I, I think United is such a club that with the way they operate and the way they do their things, you can get caught in the crossfire and, and you are done. So if you get an opportunity to move away, more so when the manager uh, has, has, has told you, maybe not directly, that, look, you are not my first, second, third or fourth choice. What are you doing in the team? His last two goals have been for Sevilla and Scotland. I think that's his <laughs> This was us. This one, he was thinking of the batter you used to decline. 
Why why is there banter? We, we let's uh, let's get context. context. He hasn't boring. performed up to level. He hasn't performed up to the level that he's playing. That's that why there's be. banter. What's We're not attacking his I don't mind him as a person. No, you know, yeah. I don't mind him as a I don't think he's banter anymore. I don't think he's banter anymore. I think this is now targeted, to be honest. I don't think he's uh, banter anymore. IBK. IBK. If you are in a profession where top one percent in the world can get into where you are in the space of the public, you are in the face of the public and all of that, you expect that you get these criticisms. When they go over the line, fine. We have to mention them that look, this is this is bad. And we've always said it when it goes over the line with other players, it feels like nobody cares that time. So now they go you are not playing well, they will criticize you. You are not have you seen what has been done? Have you seen what is being done to Mudri? Nobody cares that there's a war going on in his hometown and he's got family and friends there. He's been killed on social media anyway. Nobody cares. And with football, really? it's, I get it. you know, it, it's all, I get your point. you know, Maguire goes and scores against Brighton. You know, it's all forgotten. And so, you know, yeah. the, the narrative changes. Yeah. It's it's so quick, everything. Yeah. It is. It's very quick. I agree. The next target. I agree. Anyways. Thanks. Thank I you. think I think we have a Stan. Thank you very much for always coming through, man. Always, always. Guy. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, shameless plug. Stan Sports on YouTube. If you wanna yes. check out some Spanish content, I've been slacking, but uh, I'm gonna get <laughs> yes. back on there. All right, man. Stan. Cheers, boys. Cheers, my bro. Thank you.